So in this video, we're going to talk about empirical formula. This is also sometimes called the simplest formula. Okay. The empirical formula represents the smallest ratio of atoms present in a compound. Okay. So for instance, um, H2O represents the empirical or simplest formula for water. The molecular formula gives the total number of atoms of each element present in one molecule of a compound. So for water, its molecular or real compound, real formula, is H2O, and its empirical formula is also H2O. But what if I had something like hydrogen peroxide? H2O2 is its molecular formula, but its empirical formula is the reduced version of that, the smallest ratio. So it is actually HO. Um, what if, for instance, I have a compound like C3H6O3? That's a molecular formula, or the real formula, but I can simplify that. So what would its simplest or empirical formula be? Well, I can divide all of those by 3, so CH2O. So the empirical or simplest formula is always the most reduced form. The molecular one isn't necessarily a reduced form, but it could be. Sometimes the molecular formula and empirical formula are the same, but oftentimes there's some simplified version of it. Okay, Divide by 2, divide by 3. So the empirical formula is your simple formula, and the molecular formula is the real formula of your compound. So some other examples, butane gas, that's in lighters, is C4H10. So its empirical formula is C2H5. Octane, which is in gasoline, C8H18, is C4H9 for its empirical formula. Okay? If the subscripts in a formula will reduce, it's not an empirical formula. So this one right here, since I can reduce them, this is a molecular formula. And what's its empirical formula going to be? Well, C, H2, O. Oh, that's its empirical or simplest formula. So you can find empirical formula if you're given the masses of each compound in the compound of each element in the compound. Um, when I look at a formula of a compound like CO2, okay, the one's not written, but let's imagine it. It means for every one mole of carbon, I have two moles of oxygen. So that one and that two is a ratio either of atoms or of moles. So what I want to do is start by changing grams to moles. Well, we learned how to do that, so we're just going to go ahead and change grams to moles for all three of these. So one mole of carbon is 12.01, again from the periodic table. 1.01 1 .01 and oxygen is 16. Okay, so we go ahead and divide all these out. And this is going to be 0 0.0434 moles. And this is going to be 0 0.0861 moles. This is going to be 0 0.0218 moles. Well, my compound can't be C.0434, H.0861, O.0218, because compounds have whole numbers in them. So how do I get to my whole numbers? Well, there's a trick. I'm going to divide all three numbers by the smallest number. 0218. So this will be 1. 0.0218. And this will be 4. And divided by 0.0218. This is going to be 2. So I have two carbons for every four H's for every one O. So I'm going to write my empirical formula as C2 H4. Oh, 
And that's my empirical formula. I can also find empirical formula from the percent composition. It's almost exactly the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume I have 100 grams of it. You can assume any number. We assume 100 because it's easiest. Well, if I have 100 grams of compound, then if 52.11% of it is carbon, then I have 52.11 grams of carbon. If 13.14% of it is hydrogen, I have 13.14 grams of hydrogen. And I have 34.75 grams of O. So again, start by changing grams to moles for all three of them. One mole of carbon is 12.01. Hydrogen is 1.01 and oxygen is 16. So this is going to come out to be 4.339 moles. This is going to be 13.0 moles. And this is going to be 2.172 moles. So again, I'm not done. i got to find the smallest number and divide them all by the smallest number. And this will give me hopefully a round number, a nice whole number. This comes out to be 2, 6, and 1. So C2, H6, O. And I've got my compound. Every once in a while, there's an extra step to do. So here's a compound, and I've given you the grams of each element, just F, E, and S. I'm going to go ahead and change grams to moles. Okay, 5.85 for iron, 32.07 for sulfur. And i got to change, turn my page so I can find my numbers. So this will be 0 0.03998 moles. And this will be... 0 0.06006 moles. So this one is clearly smaller. 03998.03998. This comes out to be 1.5. Right row, what do I do? What do I do with a 1 and a 1.5? Can I just round this up to 2 or down to 1? No, it's too far, right? So I can't do that. That would be cheating. But you can I bet you can sort of look, right? If I have a ratio of 1 to 1 and a half, can you see that that's the same as 2 to 3? So sometimes when you get to this last step, instead of having a whole number, you have something 0.5. And you just have to double them both. So you get Fe 2s3. Okay, and we'll do some more examples where you have to do a little extra there at the end. But that's basically how to find empirical formula. Change grams to moles, and then divide by the smallest number. That's all there is to it. Okay, the trick is don't forget to change grams to moles first.